Today, we are going to be raiding AI-generated cards. This, These artificial intelligence algorithms, they're making these insane-looking and unique and fresh original Magic the Gathering cards. We're going to be R&D seeing if these things are printable or not. Starting with Doom in the Heliod, a black and one generic. An instant prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. What is this, Homelands? This is just darkness, but like moving backwards. The flavor text. I think I found it so a supply being to need the world, said Elspeth. Probably in some sort of fever dream that she had. Um, well, it is playable. Like it's not going to break the form any or, or anything like that. So the doom in the Heliod would prevent all damage. Circle of Ether says print. You know what? I think we can print this thing. I think this is pretty safe. Pretty safe print. It's a it's a worse form of darkness. <laughs> Holy day vibes, but dark. And of course, this is co all coming from our favorite Twitter account, Robo Rosewater M, for masters. All right, we've got the uh, twinning non you must twinning non you must. For a blue, we have an aura enchant creature. When twinning Anonymous enters the battlefield, investigate. Not bad value. Enchanted creature has activation counter and votes. So hold on. So like, let's say, let's say we play a card that requires voting. Does the creature get to vote? And do I, as the caregiver of this creature, uh, have those votes? And also the enchanted creature has activation counter. I don't know what the hell that is. I mean, your guess is as good as mine, but it's very interesting that we enchant the creature and give it the ability to vote. Valerio, Valerio I don't understand. Welcome to AI-generated cards. Oh yeah, the, the, all the lines will make your head spin uh, when you're reading. It. Like, cause the AI is very creative. They're making new mechanics before we even know they exist. It's an activation counter. Yeah, I, I can guess that. And it's allowed to vote. Uh, but at the moment, we do not know if this is playable. What do you guys think? Can we print this or shred it? This is a very... It, for, let's see. You get For one blue, you get to investigate at the very least, and you increase your voting. That is basically all I understand. But uh, it is a very... It's very difficult a card to evaluate because we don't know what activation counters do. So it looks like we are going to shred this one. <laughs> Boulder says sh Boulder says shred. Nanuk says shred. But Shaquille likes it. Alright, moving on. Uh, we got Kinging Firstborn. Black, black, black. One generic for a 4-4 legendary vampire. Partner with Lutha Wolf, constant of the thra Thrapper. As long as Kinging Firstborn is enchanted, it gets plus 16, plus 16, and has flying, first strike, vigilance, double strike, and menace. At first, I thought, wow, this is a really, this is somewhat balanced of a card, so it doesn't one shot you to death in Commander. Uh, but it has double strike, so actually it's gonna nail you. It's gonna nail you big time. It's going to deal a whole 40 damage, and all it needs to do is be. It needs to be enchanted. This must come from the exact same set as uh, twinning Nonumus. Now we understand the point of twinning Nonumus. It is to to enchant the Kinging Firstborn, and he'll vote to one shot you to death. <laughs> a dragon says print. We need a good black. Oh no! If you if you if you're playing this in commander, I guess you can't play the twinning Nonumus, but uh, you can in draft, in the AI draft. Mana cost should be higher than maybe Prince. They need to know what Lutha Wolf does first before we name this OP. Yeah, we we need to know what it can partner with, with this Lutha Wolf's constant. Shred that abomination. Turn one swamp, soul ring, dark ritual, swift, swift, swift wood boots, and you pretty much win. Should probably be a mythic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they only labeled it at rare. That's true. 
All right, I guess we're shredding. This is a bit too OP. All you need to do is enchant it with an aura. Although it'd be interesting. What do you enchant it this with? Even in like modern gameplay, like there's no good. There's like almost no playable aura. I I don't know. Maybe curious obsession or something. Get in there for that value. All right, we got Sib Ang Tormentor, blue blue, two generic for a three three human wizard that has double strike. You don't see that very often on a human <laughs> human wizard. This wizard's coming to bite, and it's got unleash. So it sounds like a, an ability that you would put on like maybe your green or red card. You unleash like a bear, you unleash a tiger, you unleash an ape. But in this case, we are unleashing a human wizard and sacrifice a creature and you can, you can investigate. The AI likes to play around with the investigate mechanic. They must, they must like it. This is a very bizarre uh, human creature. All right, are we printing a... Four mana, three three double striking cre uh, wizard with unleash. Wonder what unleash is. It, is it like on the turn, on the first turn that it attacks, it's gonna like triple strike or quadruple strike? It sounds like something you get some big value, big attack the moment it enters the battlefield, or maybe it like deal. It's like a fight thing. It enters the battlefield and immediately fights something. The reminder text for Unleash re uh, reads, you may have this creature enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. It can't block as long as it has a plus one plus one counter on it. Interesting. Why can't the AI tell us this? All right, so this is what it does. It can enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. It is like, it's like Riot. It's like a worse Riot, because you get the counter, now you can't block. Double strike on a blue creature? Absolutely. Valerio says we can print. We want to see Zope come back. Yeah. Come on, AI. Bring back the Zope mechanic. We need to know what Zope does. I think a bunch of people uh, from the AI community are here with us. Is the color pie breaking for being the most aggressive blue creature I've ever seen? Oh, absolutely. Shaquille likes this card. It says print. All right, I think I have, I see enough support for the double striking uh, blue creature with Unleash. The AI does not hate you, nor does it love you, but you are made out of atoms, which it can use for something else. Thank you so much, Millmaster. Much appreciated. All right, moving on. Let's get to uh, Mike Hand Rouser. White, white, one red for a 1-1 one, one death touch creaser with... Home blasts. Home blasts for a white and one generic. Uh, I gotta just even... You know, the AI teaches me words that I didn't even know exist. Does anyone from the AI community can tell us what the hell this means? What is this mechanic? As far as I can see on Google, this car, this name, this word doesn't exist. The home blasts. I'm gonna blast you at home. He looks like a, he looks like a plant. Oh yeah, he's a plant knight. <laughs> Maybe that means he's like a gardener or something. He looks like a gardener. You know, once he's done his duty with knight, uh, being a knight, you know, doing, being on the guard, he goes back and you know plows the field. Hence, how he can go from being go from swords to plowshares. He's more he's more plant than farmer now. has nothing to do with plants. Mike from Breaking Bad. Double reason to shred it. Also, will the AI use the same language every ability? I have no idea. I hope it remembers what a Zope is. I like that he has such an interesting last name, but his first name is just Mike. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite of a mix, isn't it? No info on Homeblance. All right, well, uh, I'm assuming it's some form of lifelink or something. I don't know. Or maybe it's like some form of like indestructible. It can be, in maybe it becomes indestructible, but then when you become indestructible, you cannot deal death touch or something like that. Damage to permanent for each land type. Yeah, this is all we see. All right, are we printing or shredding this? We have a Boros death touch creature with a, an activated ability that may or may not do anything. 
Does red or white get death touch? I think no. That's up to you guys. Okay, we got some shreds here. Not a ton of shreds, but it's enough shreds to say, all right. The uh, Wizards of the Coast does not approve. I sometimes wonder, do they like throw cards and AI generators just to get some ideas? You know, because it's the, the AI, they're the ones thinking outside the box. Stab to arms, red two generic, create, it's an instant speed card. Create a one one red goblin creature token with death touch. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. What? <laughs> So for how good is that? Is that like pretty? Is that like pretty pushed for an extra combat card for three mana? It's three mana. You get another combat phase with a goblin creature token with that touch. Not that you really need it. So you don't really, you don't actually want to print. You want, you don't even want to play this on your opponent's turn to get your goblin token. I mean, I guess maybe that's the way I, the AI is looking at this. Oh, after this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Yeah, so it should be could be for your opponent. You could give this to somebody else. Well, you get a death touch token. You know, that is interesting though, because let's say your opponent has like one creature out and they attack. You could stab to arms at instant speed, get the goblin token, block it, it dies. Then they get an additional combat phase, but the, what are they going to use it for? They're going to use it for nothing. So, so it can be, it, it's, uh, it's, it protect, it attack. And also, you don't want to see your combat phase, their combat phase come back. The goblin doesn't even have haste, but that's the beauty of it. It's good on it's good on defense and offense. It depends on how many creatures your opponents have, because if you use it on your opponent's turn, they're gonna get the extra combat phase. You could give it to anybody. After any phase? I guess so. There's going to be an additional combat phase after the end step. In Commander, I definitely see it in Mono Red Aggro winning quickly. It doesn't untap your creatures. That is... Oh yeah, that's true. It doesn't untap the creatures. So you just get to make better... You get to make another attack. That is balanced. Well, it is not... It's not broken. So I think we can print this card. I actually think we can print this card. And it's the most intelligible card that uh, we've read so far today. All right, Cure the Bright Shrieker. White, blue, black, red, green. It's a Woo Bird card. 7-7. Seven, seven. Flying, first strike, lifelink, angel. It's just like, but no vigilance. Where's the vigilance? So we got blue for flying, white for feistry, white for first strike, and also probably white for lifelink. Unless that's a black ability too. Or I guess the... Red can have first strike. Where is our green and black ability? Would a post end step combat phase let you keep damage on your opponent's creatures through their through their turns? I don't know. It's a good question. This could be a default commander for five color. Yeah, just for some. It looks like it looks like our commander precon card. It's like what I see in those Commander Precons. Come play with Cure the Bright Shrieker. And all these other five color, you know, play a five color Commander. Card sucks. Well, yeah, but it's playable. Needs draw seven cards on ETB. This is fair, I think, but maybe one more generic? I think it's pretty fair. It's like, you know, for five mana, you better get like like some good stats on this thing and it's and it's like a three turn clocking commander you know i think we can print it i agree i agree Danuch. let's yeah it's too weak let's print it imagine making the set ai masters just full of outrageously busted cards that you can't understand all right the screech of cauldra what is cauldra cauldra complete is cauldra like just all the equipment or is it called just a person, an actual someone? Blue, blue, too generic for a 2-2 creature. Thank you for uh, letting us know. I wouldn't have known otherwise. Okay, so you can tap, add one colorless to your mana pool. Or you can pay a green, one generic. Tap, each attacking creature becomes blocked by a permanent. And opponent controls that share a creature type with it. That is very interesting. So that is completely useless. 
in, for one-on-one -on -one magic, but in in Commander, that looks insane. But it, I guess it wouldn't. It would if you have this on the battlefield, no one's going to want to attack. Because if one person attacks somebody, then you would just get somebody else to block their block their creatures if they share a creature type. Okay, as you guys determine if this card is a good card or not, we got to thank our sponsors today. And who are those sponsors? That's FusionGamingOnline.com. My best, my favorite place to buy magic cards, buy sealed product. Uh, you can order your Dominaria United over here, but also Deal of the Week. Save 15% off all Legend singles. There is a Deal of the Week every week at FusionGamingOnline.com, and you do not want to miss out on it. Go check them out every single week to find out what the new Deal of the Week is. And if 15% off Legends cards isn't good enough for you, don't forget you can use coupon code NIKACHU at checkout for an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online and your ability to play any deck, any format, anytime you want. For the base, I think for like the... Um, I've been playing Popper recently because of this. You know, I can rent the... Ninja the Deep Hours, the Hydro Blasts, the Blue Elemental Blasts. Let me let's me play Popper. And which is a Mana Traders lets you try out formats that you've never tried before. You can try out new formats using my link, Mana Traders link in the description below, or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore 9Y6. And now back to some delicious. AI cards. The Screech of Cauldra. Where's chat? I lost chat here. All right, are we playing this card? Blocks have to be legal. This card is a rules nightmare for new players. Absolutely. Well, maybe they don't. Each attacking creature becomes blocked by a pro an opponent. Maybe it. Maybe this is the magic. Let's say. Okay, let's say creatures are attacking you, right? Let's say creatures are attacking you. You could activate this, and now all of a sudden, they have to be blocked by a permanent an opponent controls that shares a creature type with it. That's the way I'm looking at this card. This card makes me want to screech, print it. Good in a shapeshifter deck. I think it's good if your opponents have shapeshifters, if I'm interpreting this right. The way it's worded, you could make an attacking creature block itself. <laughs> Uh, or your opponent's other creatures block it. I think flavor. Will, I think the idea is to get your opponent's creatures to block it. If you can make them any type you want or have a mirror match, it's funny. Else not. My thing is like, if this thing's on the battlefield, why would you ever attack? Because you know your opponent will attack with the screech of Cauldra. I mean, activate the ability. I guess you just have to only attack with creatures that nobody else shares a creature type with. It's like reverse boast. Can you block an enchantment creature with a non-creature enchantment? That's a good question. That is good. Probably not because it's not a le it can't legally block. Although they did say permanent. <laughs> they said you can it can be blocked by a permanent, so it could be like blocked by maybe a land. I don't know. We need to see the errata on this. Um, I saw some votes for keeping this card. So, yeah. Looks like we're going to be printing this one. Alright, you people like this. We're going to keep the Screech of Cauldra. Cauldra Screech is hot, really loud. Alright, we got the Sudden Dragon. Uh, red, red, three generic for an instant. Flashback is enormous. Red, 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 nine generic. The spell can't be countered. Okay. And create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. It, do you know what? It's interesting. I was like, do you know what? This is like really fair. But it is an instant speed card. Like this is like some sort of win condition in a in an Izzet deck. Or some sort of just guy control deck. It's not that bad. It's an uncounterable flying red dragon that you can cast at instant speed. Flashback costs too much, but I like it. Hey, you know what? In a, in a, if you're a control deck, you understand the games that go to like turn 20. 
the most appropriate name ever. Print it, print it. Instant speed is great. Print, all right, people love it. We're printing this thing. MTG Neural Net. Was it like Skynet? MTG Neural Net? Is this, is the AI sort of being self-conscious at this point? Uh, green, three generic for a 5-5 five, five legendary artifact creature construct flying. When MTG Neural Net enters the battlefield, you may destroy a target enchantment. Okay, two generic, discard a card, add black mana. That's weird. Okay, so I, it, you pay two to filter that mana into black, black mana. Um, it's a flying... Anyway, it's it's a pretty big creature, to be honest. It's a four mana, five, five flyer that destroys enchantments upon ETB. Harrison thinks it's broken. So what, are we shipping it or shredding it? You know, the way power creep is with Magic the Gathering these days, it actually doesn't look completely out of bounds to what wiz uh, wizards would print. I think this is actually well within their lines. Four mana to destroy a creature? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's an artifact. Yeah, it's artifact, so it's like weak weak in that regard too. It can get blown up by Force of Vigor. Ectoplasm's like, meh. Nerd of the party says ship. Print, print. No, Alright, so we're gonna print it. I agree. I don't think it's too bad. Plus one on the play, minus one upon activation. Print it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Okay. I was, I, I was, I, I had to read this one. You may destroy target enchantment. Oh, it doesn't matter. You're not an enchantment. You're an artifact. Because usually it's like you have to. Sometimes, sometimes the cards say you have to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Okay. Summoning Long Bear. Summon you, Long Bear. Uh, <laughs> it's a blue, blue, one generic two, two Eldrazi processor. You, there is an imposter among us. In this uh, bear, what do, what do they call a bunch of bears? A herd? A, like, you know how they say a flock, a pride? What is what is a bunch of bears called? Anyway, there is, a, there is an imposter among us. Pay two life, regenerate target creature with mana value two or greater. Hey, that's actually flavorful for a bear. The next time this creature would be destroyed this turn, it isn't. Instead, tap it, remove all damage, and remove it from combat. Uh... It's a it's a bear print. It's like it is a it's like I don't know, it's like an Eldrazi that has escaped the Eldrazi hive mind, has decided to become a bear on earth, and it's helping other bears. A sleuth of bears? Yeah, we got a good one. Great for a common. Great, print it. Kinda OP. Is it really kinda OP? Pay two life for generate target creature with mana value two or greater. Maybe, maybe. Uh, including itself. Okay, so we got some flavor text here. It would leave new a new aspects. Mount one finally must be inflacted. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm looking up inflacted. Inflacted, meaning. Uh, inflict it doesn't it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned it may be inflicted is what it meant hey AI can make uh, typos too all right print it you guys like this I actually don't mind it it's uh, a bit weird for a blue card bit of a color pie break but uh, I like the idea I like the idea that there is this Eldrazi living on earth as a bear and it's helping other bears and other well I guess other two Mana Valley 2 or greater creatures. Okay, we'll check it out after the stream. We'll check out the... I'm very excited to hear that we've got a new Merfolk. It's going to be like Christmas waiting for the stream to end. Print, please. Alright, let's print this thing. We have a channel just for funny non-English sentences it makes. What is the AI thinking? Yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, and I'm sure you can like contact Robo Rosewater M, but they've got, like, if you're interested in the AI world, they've got a whole Discord and everything available. 
Uh, Alright, so we have Horizon Skeleton Blue for Generic Vampire. We got a blue vampire! I don't know if there's a single blue vampire in the game. So it's a flying 3-3, that's not too bad. Alright, pay two man, pay two mana, return a land you control to its owner's hand, you get three energy. And pay four mana, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That is interesting! That is very, very interesting. It's a blue card that gets energy. Do you know it would be more flavorful? Like if it won if it won in combat, if you attack and something blocks and it doesn't die, you get the energy. Like you suck the blood of the last thing that you just attacked. It has energy. It's broken. It looks balanced. Xander. Oh yeah, Xander is blue, so it could be a descendant of Xander. Better Zeron Orb effect. So pay two mana, return a land. We, we don't sack the land, right? So we just put it back onto the battlefield. But you need to do it twice. So pay four mana, get seven energy, spend four, and drain. Drain and gain. Could be paired with cards that use energy. Well, those cards suck, to be honest. I love the new school energy symbol on old border cards. Okay, are we shipping or shredding this card? I think we can ship it. I think this is a pretty easy ship. I don't think there's nothing particularly broken about this card. Energy is broken. Well, not on the Horizon Skeleton. Just in time for Halloween. Anyone watching this on in October? Let, let us all know in the comments section. All right, we have another Aura card. Seer's Judgment for a blue. Um, <laughs> it's like the AI scanned all the possible auras and found that the only ones that are playable are the ones for one blue. Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Enchant Creature has tap, create two 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi sign creature tokens. They have sacrifice this creature, add add generic, uh, sorry, add colorless mana. This is crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's weird. Okay, so I can put on my opponent's creature, and it's not going to untap anymore, so it's like removal. Uh, on the other hand, I could also put it on my creature and create two color. So I have one shot to create two mana. So basically, that's what it does. It's a ritual for, for two mana. If I really look at it like this. And I have to sacrifice, basically sacrifice a creature. I just use it on my own stuff. Yeah, but it doesn't untap. The enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So you can put on your own creature. Yes, you make the scions, but then that's it. So you have to, you have, you need some way of untapping the creature, which maybe you can. Maybe you, you can use the scions, activate the ability of something else, untap your permanent. Ship it. This is dope. Print actually good design. Broken with intruder alarm. Yes, it is. That, but that's a three card combo, which is pretty fair. You need the creature in play, you need the intruder alarm, and then you need the seer's judgment. You can use creatures that untap themselves like Pillapala. You can always find a way to untap the thing. All right. Put in a token deck, use it on a useless 1-1. One -one. Yesterday's win with dragon travel was awesome. You're welcome. Welcome, Kylie. Minamo. Oh! No, but hold on, but then Minamo will be tapped. You only get like two shots with it. But I mean, yeah, I get it. Like, so it doesn't go infinite with Minamo, but it's possible. Makes infinite with Pillapala. I don't remember what Pillapala does. Pillapala. Pillipala. Okay, two generic for a 1-1 one, one flying, pay to untap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Oh, so we equip to the we equip to the Pillapala and But we just make infinite tokens, right? We tap, make the tokens, use the tokens to untap. So I mean it doesn't go anywhere. You need some sort of ETB effect to uh to basically abuse it. To abuse. Alright, we shipping or shredding this? I think we can ship it. If this makes an infinite combo in Commander, so be it. They have a million infinite combos at this point. What's another one? Pillapala is a saucy combo. Tokens need haste. Or you just need some sort of ETB effect. Make use out of the ETBs. Uh, process, 
Process tail. Process tail for a black. An instant arcane spell. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Whoa! Uh, splice onto arcane for a black. I don't remember how splice works, but it sounds like we could get multiple. We could, pl we could play like a... What's it called? Um, like a ritual and get a process pros tail out of it. Or is it prosi tail? Too strong shred? That's broken. Super broken. I wonder how this would play out though. Like late in the game, you have no cards in hand. So it's like a pretty dead card later in the game. Early in the game, it's really strong. X is the number of cards in your hand. Yeah, you can play copies of it. Probably too powerful. Seems OP. Sack tokens get one mana extra. Oh, you're, you're still on the last card. Whenever you cast an arcane, you can pay the splice cost to have it gain the effect. But there's not that many good arcane spells out there. I heard of the new merfolk. I'll check out the new merfolk later. I actually like this quite a bit. I actually don't think it's too strong. All right, so are we shipping or shredding this card? You guys think it's OP. Too broken would get banned. I doubt it. Why would it get banned? You have to play... Oh, I guess on the draw, you can play a sp one land and then give something minus X, minus X. Oh, it's an arcane spell itself. So you can, like, basically kill two things for one card. That's interesting. And it's cheap, too. So what, it's, like, just cost two black? And you can, yeah, it costs black to cast the spell, and it costs black to spl splice the arcane. Ship it, we'll let the world burn. Ship! We have another ship. Wow, you guys want to ship the thing. It's just a kill spell. Why is it broken? Because you can, spli you can uh, splice onto arcane it. Ship it, let the power creep on. All right! None of you guys voted to shred it, so uh, there it is. Oh, we got a forest here. That's nice. Idyllic lands. The AI artwork is beautiful. I don't know if this actually was made by AI, but uh, a lot of a lot of AI artwork is actually really nice. I'm assuming this was AI artwork. Okay, we've got a uh, Sun Painter, black, black, blue, nine generic. That is a very expensive card. It's not even legendary, so you're not even gonna make it your commander. When, uh, for an eight-eight creature, for sorry, for an eight-eight angel that looks like she has the head of a crocodile. Whenever you gain life, other target permanents you control become two, three crocodiled creatures. Oh, it is like a, it's like a croc, it's like, it's a crocodile that went to heaven. Someone killed this thing for its skin to turn it into luggage. And now, whenever you gain life, other target permanents you control become two, three crocodiled creatures. I love how the image matches the uh, the ability. Print. It's terrible, but funny. Ship it. Go Gators! Ship! Alright, let's ship this thing. What's the harm in this thing? Alright, so we go for Flamekin Moons. Red, red, two generic. Whenever you have seven or more life, you win the game. You may cast Flamekin Moons as though it had flash. If you pay two generic more to cast it... Oh, so hold on, let me read that. You may cast Flamekin Moons as though it had flash. If you pay two more to cast it, okay. If you do, you gain five life. Whenever you have seven or more life, you win the game. <laughs> Hold on, I don't know how I read that first part and like never uh, and didn't laugh at it. It was just like Just went through one ear out the other no interpretation whatsoever When you have seven or more life you just win the game So wasn't even the point of casting at no Maybe it is important to cast it at flash speed because just in case you know your opponent has counter magic You want to wait until everyone's tapped out. All right, everyone flamekin moons GG Gotcha shouldn't have tapped out Oh my god, that's uh, that the most turn one win ever. Broken. Shred it. Modern Horizons 3. And it's more like Modern Horizons 27. I don't think this would come out in my... Like, there is a point... I could see a world where at some point this is 
four mana for an enchantment is like really weak. I can tell this is the most balanced card in the game. <laughs> Way too powerful. Holy, this is so broken. Toss it in the fire. The flame king. This is like, okay, this is like ultra blood moon is what, what this card is. It's like a bunch of blood moons. It's a family of blood moons that have come to win the game, come to attack you. If you thought one blood moon was a win more card, or it was an instant win card. This is when you've got all the moons coming for you. Hold this card in your hand until you determine if your opponent is a dick. Okay. <laughs> Alright, looks like uh, it's not going to pass the RD test. RD gets this card. What are you doing? <laughs> Imagine this was like playable for a week on Magic the Gathering Online. Whenever you have seven or more life, you win the game. Gotta get your life, to gotta get that life total down really quickly. All right, secret strength. Uh, using the future sight border. Blue, blue, two generic. Each player draws two cards. And gravestorm. Whenever you cast the spell, copy it for each permanent put into a graveyard this turn. Okay, hear me out. Turbo cup. Each player draws two cards. And as great, whenever you cast the spell, copy it for each permanent put into a graveyard this turn. This doesn't seem bad. It looks like quite. It looks quite fair. Each player is going to get the, the ability. And it's also really expensive. And sure, you get to storm off a little bit. I don't know. What do you guys think? I guess you could also, by the, the turn that you cast this, play a bunch of spells, draw a bunch of cards, and maybe combo off. It's like... So it, it's like storm ass. So like, even if your opponents get the cards, maybe it doesn't matter because you're going to win the game on that turn anyway. You like it? We're going to print this thing? It's fair. Group hug commander card. Secret strength. Yeah, Fufu says print it. Underwhelming, but not broken. I guess it's harder to combo off uh, because your opponents will draw a bunch of cards that are going to stop you. Convoluted mill, but not sure what the deck would fit it in. I don't know. A card that wants card draw. All right. You guys seem to like secret strength, so. Secret strength. What is that art like? Looks like someone in a tree two people in a tree or in the mountains i can't tell anymore okay desert of distortion three generic mana for an artifact tap add a colorless all right so we got a mana rock of some sort pay a blue tap return target zombie card from your graveyard to your hand not bad for a zombie deck and also pay a blue to generic tap search your library for a card put it into your graveyard then shuffle your library that's broken that's pretty broke. That is basically a tutor for any card that has flashback or uh, any sort of graveyard reanimating card. And especially if this is a zombie deck, they are definitely going to want this thing. Now, but is it really broken? Like, this is really good value. But it's hard to say that this thing is actually broken. Yeah, it's great for the zombie deck. Entomb on an artifact. Repeatable un entombs on an artifact. But it does cost you three generic to cast and then three mana again to put in the graveyard. Ida says, ship it. Valerio says, shred it. You don't even need to sack the land. No, you don't need to sack anything. The graveyard is just an extension of your hand these days. The AI has recognized that. Scarret, Scarab God Staple. Mr. Deadhead says, I want it. Wouldn't call it broken, but pretty nice. Ship it. Print it. All right, looks like it's getting printed. All right, we're printing the desert. The desert of distortion. And actually, it has um, some flavor with zombies in the desert. In my opinion. It is, it is a clunky card. All right, we got the Dead Eye Aura. For three generic, an artifact. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get energy pay to tap pay to energy uh dead eye aura deals one damage to any target this looks terrible this is really bad it should be it should be an artifact lane though or ocean or artifact land why the blue mana it screams black all the way actually there were a lot of blue zombies on uh war of the spark wherever the hell that took place Okay, Dead Eye Aura. I think this is unplayable. I mean, this is this is very much within the ability of energy. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get energy, and all you do is deal one damage. It's pretty poor pinger. Well, I don't know. Wait, I guess you can print it. Like whatever. It's not gonna do anything. It's not evil. 
Okay, let's move on to the Tunnin of the Murders. A green axe sorcery. Uh, with recover red red. I'm assuming that means something like bring it back from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, Tunin of the Murders deals X damage to any target. Refresh me on my X damage spells. Is this any good? It's just like we have a lot of cards in red for something like that. I just the thing is I don't know what the recover means. Recover sounds like you pay two red and you get to bring it back from your graveyard to your hand or something like that. Massive color break delete from simulation. I want I'm getting a lot of okay. After this stream, I'm gonna set up another stream and we'll talk about the Murpho card, whatever that is. So just for everyone who's talking about the new Murfolk, okay? We'll talk about the new Murfolk. Green has already gone too far from its color pie. Way better than Devil's Play. Better in green because of ramp? True story. But usually red is compo like composed with green anyway. Any target so you can just hold it until you can delete the opponent. Absolutely. Why shred? Okay, is it that bad though? Are we shipping or shredding this? We got some for ship. We got some for shred. Recover keywords, maybe it refunds two red that it's used on? Uh, Yeah, like if X is 10 or more, save two mana. Shred due to color pie. All right, looks like shred, shred. You guys want to shred this card, that is weird. All right, we're gonna shred the card. It looks, it looks okay to me. Deal X damage to any target, and it's a sorcery. Cup, blue, each player draws two cards. That is interesting. Here, have a cup of tea. Each player draws two cards for one blue. So it's like thought cast, but everyone gets it. Feels like a, feels like, feels like I'm, it's a bill from Pokemon. Cerise of Ether likes it. It's simple. It's actually really simple, but genius. Fair, fair, but shred it. <laughs> cup, yes. And, it look, and it, look at this art. It's got a picture of the ocean in the cup. I like it. Wizards of the Coast, hire whoever made this. Print the cup. <laughs> I would like the cup, please. LOL. And funny, I know, it's pretty fun. Amazing art. It's really nice, actually. I really like, it's one blue, everyone draws two cards, and the art is spot on. It's a banger name, banger ability, and banger art. Yeah, we need more simple hug cards. I, I'm trying to think if Storm could use this in Modern. They just pay a blue, draw two cards when the opponent is, like, tapped out, if that would be enough. But whatever. Yeah, could you give me a cup of water for two? Okay, let's let's print this thing. I like it. it. Seems like a lot of you in chat are enjoying the flavor of this card. Nice design, very nice design. Okay, we've got the Haggard Booter, a red two generic two two Goblin Pirate, a green one generic double Hagger double ha is it Haggard? Double Haggard Booters power and toughness until end of turn. Oh, we double the power and toughness until end of turn. So basically, you know, pay a green, one generic, it gets bigger. Uh, which also means, like, if you made it bigger in the first place, like, so if you gave it plus three, plus three, then you double it on top of that. So it becomes, like, a, it goes from a 5-5 five, five to a 10-10. Ten, ten. It's actually really, 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 really fair. Burning Paper Sun says print the thing. Very fair. Yeah, print it. Looks like a, looks like a limited card, to be honest. Go from two. Oh, we could do this multiple times. It can stack. Liquid Soulfly just found the utmost power of this thing. So it goes from two two to a four four. Then we can activate it again to an eight eight. Double it again into a sixteen sixteen. This pirate hit punches big time. This is a bomb. And now all of a sudden people are like shred it. I think we can still print it. But if you have a lot of mana, then it will go infinite. Or it'll, it'll, it'll go big. And then if you have infinite mana, it will go infinite. Fair. No shenanigans here. Please ignore the lack of a once per turn on this card. 
No trample though. That is true. You got it. You got to put the trample on it. That is an interesting design. That is unexplored design space. I think it's it's very fairly costed. So it can be, but it, by turn four, it can be an eight-eight creature. That's interesting. But you have to commit. You have to commit a lot of mana and attack with it. So that's like you spend by turn four, you spend seven mana for an eight-eight creature, and it does turn back into the thing. It turns back into its original creature at end of turn. Okay, black, black, too generic for a blood bomb enchantment. Whenever you cast a spirit or arcane spell, target player mills three cards. Then you create X, X, sorry. Uh, target player mills three cards. Then you create X, one, one, green elf warrior creature tokens, where X is the highest mana value among creature cards in their graveyard. Okay, so this is a, this is an enchantment. Cast a spirit or arcane spell. Target player mills three cards. So I cast like Spell Queller, for example. Opponent mills three cards, or I mill three cards. Then we create X11 green elf warrior creature tokens where X is the highest mana value among the creature cards in their graveyard. The highest mana value among creature cards. Okay, so I guess if they have a four, if they have a mana value four creature, I get a bunch of elves. This is really off. Why would this thing? Oh no, but actually elves are black too. That actually was is within the color pie. It's hella strong. Print the thing. Loving the art. I love it when the AI artwork looks like a Star Wars poster of some sort. Would be OP and Spirit Tribal. Well, definitely some spirit deck has to take advantage of this. I think it limited to arcane and spirit spells makes this very fair. Please print. Random, randomly create seven elves on a single spirit drop. Yes, that's actually how this works. So if your opponent, if your opponents have like these really expensive creatures in the graveyard, you, uh, what's it called? You will play your spell. They'll mill some cards, and then you get all the. You'll get all your elves equal to their giant creature in the graveyard. Dear God, if you mill Emrakul, would it count? Because Emrakul might trigger first. I think I think Emrakul would trigger first, and then all the thing you'd lose all the all the creatures would be gone. The whole entire graveyard would be gone, and then you wouldn't get any creatures. Fair and fun, print it. All right, make tokens, print. You guys want to print this card? It looks like a commander card anyway. Uh, what is it? Oh, is this a card? Okay, we got Dread Currents, three generic for a six-six flyer with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, copy, target instant or sorcery spell you control with power two or less. So, I mean, I'm assuming the the AI has created those sort of sorcery instant creatures out there. There was like one we went through that was, I think it was an instant with some stats on it. Now we actually understand what it was getting at. You can copy instants and sorceries that have power and toughness on it. I love this. Print it for my cast deck. Power two or less? Yes. Power two or less. Copy infinite bolts. Instant creature. Actually, hold on. You know, ignoring Magecraft, I mean, this thing is just busted. It's a three mana flying 6 6 creature. That's pretty disgusting. I don't think we can. Yeah. We, let's get back to reality. This Magecraft thing has completely distracted us. This is a 6 6 flyer. And also, if we even ignore, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, copy instant or sorcery spell, yeah, yeah, this ability is completely useless. We don't need this. And it's generic. It's just three generic mana. Any deck can play this. In fact, I could play it in my Merfolk deck. It's an artifact, so it's fair. Yeah, yeah, we could just destroy it with artifact destruction. New burn creature. <laughs> Yeah, that's too OP for okay. We're gonna I think we have to shred this card. It's gone. Okay, a Johnny Pokin Guild Mage. We got blue blue six generic. Oops. Okay, this we got a planeswalker today. Blue blue six generic. For a three loyalty Elspeth. Uh plus one. Search your library for a rat, dinosaur, horrier, flaff. Then pro <laughs> and then proliferate. And it, by the way, it's not dinosaur, it's dinosaur. And a horrier 
and a Flaff, then proliferate. All right, minus three until end of turn. A, <laughs> a Johnny Pokin Guild Mage becomes a 3-3 Construct Artifact <laughs> Creature Token with Flying, where X is that creature's power. This is, uh, Elspeth has, this is an imposter in Elspeth. Ship it, it's it's perfect. We're not, we're, we don't even do anything with it, we just search our library. I'm assuming we search and put it into our hand. We could find a Dyna Shower, a Horir Flaff, then Proliferate. Oh, so we actually, do we have to put counters, our loyalties counters, something that you could proliferate? So we go plus one, proliferate, then we go to five? If I understand this correctly? My brain hurts reading this. Ah, you get used to it after you've read enough of these cards. The Shower of the Dinos. Searches for... Oh yeah, you can search for a rat. So great in your rat tribal deck. Is this canon for the new Phyrexia storyline? Uh, Harrison, thank you so much for the super chat. Love the content. I'm usually unable to see the streams live, but I watch the VODs. If you can check it out, I post a great AI generate card in the Discord. Uh, sorry, I don't post anything from my Discord. You got to somehow get it. I mean, I can look at it in the Discord, but uh, I am very nervous with moving stuff from the Discord just in case. Because I've almost accidentally shared DMs. Like, I don't want to accidentally click something on Discord and all of a sudden I'm in somebody's DMs, if you understand what I'm saying. For eight, kill it. Oh yeah, it's a very expensive eight mana Planeswalker. But whatever, the Johnny Poking Guild Mage. Okay, are we shipping or shredding this thing? Okay, hold on. Maybe I can share this one that was in the Discord, but I don't want to make this. I don't want to do this on the regular. Copy image. Oops, no. Copy, copy link. I'm only doing this because you super chatted. All right, we've got, does this show up well? No, it doesn't. Hold on. Okay, let's go, I'm gonna finish off with this one and then we'll quickly look at that one. Okay, are we shipping or shredding this thing? I think we're shredding this. Or actually, we could ship it. I guess it's, I mean, you could play it, it's not a big deal. Okay, we'll, we'll let it, we'll let it go. Okay, this next one, we've got, uh oh. Where am I? I'm lost. Okay. Serenara Mutant. Blue, green, two generic for a frog mutant with no power toughness. As Serenara Mutant enters the battlefield, choose a word other than land, play, mana, cast, shop, plaza, equipment, resource, item, club, parley, root, form, mask, ID, account, city, emblem, alliance, war, public, landmark, class, creed, identify, belief, Value, victory, status, social, personal, quirk, character, ideology, commitment, land, fill, soul, fiction, hate. Matt, okay, what is this going? So we just, as an as well, choose a word other than that. And I guess it becomes that until end of turn. <laughs> All right, back to Robo Rosewater. My favorite AI generator. Okay, you'll be appropriate for a 2-2 creature. You'll be appropriate enters the battlefield. Exile up to one target creature an opponent controls until you'll be appropriate leaves the battlefield. We already have cards like this. This is nothing particularly new, I would say. Did you realize you were reading the list of words necessary to create AI speech? No, I didn't realize it at all. I had no idea. <laughs> so it was like, just you have to say a word that doesn't exist. This was just saying every single word for... So basically, there is going to be no word that you can say. Pretty fair ship. Print. Prison creatures are usually 3 CMC. But this one's 4 generic. So any deck can play this. This is the, like, the card that every deck can exile. Exile up to one target creature. Too bad it's not permanent. It is colorless. That is the thing that's different about this. Usually these abilities are on a white creature. Like Skyclave Apparition or something like that. Colorless Banishing Fiend. Decent draft piece. Oh, it's a snap draft scoop. 
<laughs> Worst courtroom artist ever. Would be a super staple if printed shred. You won't be disappointed. Oh yeah, hold on. There's uh flavor text. I have I have protected a vile ged off. Nico Bolas. Maybe it's supposed to be like I have protected a vile, comma, get off. Yes, it's a banishing priest. Colorless, yet not an artifact. Seems perfect and limited. Alright. Maybe we've power creep has risen to a point where we can print something like this. I mean it's not broken. I don't think it's broken for a colorless card. Get off. Uh, am I missing a card here? It was AI uh, advertisements for their own cards. Life is a resource and so is death. All right, we've got the Divine Dragon for 17 mana. It's an 11-11 avatar with hex proof. At the beginning of your end step, double the number of put counters on Divine Dragon. Cool story, bro. Cool story. Am I East Coast? No, I'm Central, actually. Those are the promos for EDH decks we made that uh, LRR played last week. Oh, interesting. Nice. Shred so quick. Divine Dragon would be busted in Calibrated Blast. Oh, yeah. I guess it would be an instant include in Calibrated Blast. Because now you don't need to look for, like, Emrakul, which is, like, a 15 uh, mana cost creature. You just need a 17 one. <laughs> Two times zero equals zero. But maybe from this set, you know, divide, put counters um, or a mechanic of some sort of uh, some sort of thing. Show and tell combo. Would this be a good show and show and tell uh, card? I don't know. It's just an 11-11. I think Emrakul is still stronger. Ship it to use for that earlier card that makes tokens based on CMC. Oh, yeah. You could put this in your own graveyard and then make like a bunch of elves. It's all coming together. AI learned how to make synergy. It's all coming together. Okay, Archangel, work of the flesh of feather for three mana, three generic mana. We have a 5-5 go five, five goblin warrior that's indestructible. Arch Archangel, work of the flesh of feather, attacks each combat if able, and is hexproof. That's actually... Um, balances things out a little bit. At least it has to attack every turn. It's not going to die or anything, but uh, you can't hold it up on defense. Whenever you cast a spirit or arcane spell, this effect that say destroy, don't, des don't destroy them. Whenever you cast a spirit or arcane spell, this effect this effects that say destroy, don't, des don't destroy them. It's like, okay, so I'm guessing if someone plays a spell, destroy this thing, you could, in response, play a spirit or arcane spell, and then all of a sudden, the destroy thing is neutralized. It doesn't work anymore. Fair Goblin Prince. Oh, Joshua Hendrick, thank you so much for the super chat. You gotta check out the new Merfolk. I'll see it. I, I'm telling you, I will see it. I'll After the show, I'll make another show. Shred? Have pr hex proof and indestruct. Yeah, uh, no, hold on. So this it doesn't have. Oh yeah, it has hex proof if it attacks. It attacks each combat if able and has hex proof. Or does it just have hex proof in general? Or it, does it have hex proof when it attacks? Twisted likes this. Let's print it. David says shred it. You uh, so you can't cast spirit of arcane spells that destroy cards. I think. I guess not, or maybe it says that if you cast, if you have any spirit or arcane spells that were to destroy, it doesn't destroy them anymore. I guess that's the downside to this card. Hexproof in general with the wording. How is it common? <laughs> yeah, it's a common. Hey, in the AI draft, it's bonkers. Make this like a seven cost. Oh, only uh, spirit slash arcane. Yeah, only spirit. Okay, well, okay. I think this is just broken anyway. I don't think we're gonna print an indestructible five five creature. It's gonna have hex proof. 
That would make for an insane win condition, even in a, even in a control deck. The mirror actually would be funny. Both players just attacking each other with five, five indestructible creatures. What a slugfest. All right, next up, we've got the Hell Coozer, a green four generic four, five beast. Tap to add a colorless mana. So it's like a mana dork. Okay, pay a green and one generic. The Hell Coozer becomes a 4-6 bard and or green controller creature with flanking. So for two mana, we can upgrade the butt from a f from five toughness to six, to six toughness, and it gets flanking. I don't even remember what flanking does. What is flanking? I'll just look it up. Hold on. Flanking MTG. Uh, flanking means whenever this creature becomes blocked by a creature without flanking, the blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. And we can, uh, do we have to activate the ability before they block? Either way, I think this is, this is ridiculously fair. This is ridiculously fair. The Hell Coozer. I like the name more than I like the card. Okay, we have Void Mage Fungus. For four mana, an artifact, at tap, add, it's a mana rock, tap, add a mana. Pay one mana, tap, add one mana of any color, so it filters mana. Or we could pay to tap, sacrifice Void Mage Fungus, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, then gain one life for each creature you control. That is a fair card. That is a fair card if I've ever seen one. Great limited card. Print it, ship it. <laughs> Wait, this would legitimacy play in EDH, probably. All right, this looks like a great ship card. Let's ship this card. And that will do it for Coffee and MTG today. Thanks so much for watching for all these great AI cards. As usual, we do this 8 o'clock AM, AM Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday. So be there or be square. Thanks so much for all the support. Everyone who's become a member, everyone who has super chatted. I love it and appreciate all of you. Uh, let's me know that this is val valuable and we got to keep the coffee running every single weekday forward. But thank you guys, because without of you guys showing up every day, there would be no show. You guys are the show. I'm not the show. You are. You're the one who gave, gives the commentary. We're Without you guys, I don't know if we're going to ship or shred these cards. So, as usual, keep brewing those coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.